So it's been three months, in fact, more than three months since three police officers in Louisville, Kentucky, shot and killed Breonna Taylor in her home while she was asleep. And even though the Louisville Metro Council voted unanimously to ban no-knock warrants, I mean, we haven't seen actual accountability until now when we learned that one of the officers involved in her death, Brett Hankison, was fired. And again, he was fired three months later. But I mean, needless to say, that's not good enough. First of all, they all need to be fired. Second of all, it's not enough to just fire them. They have to be charged in her death. Because losing your job is not a sufficient punishment if you take a life. And I mean, even if we get justice for Breonna Taylor, this is still a sad story, right? Because justice isn't going to bring her back. A life was lost forever. She will no longer be able to live. So I mean, at a minimum, we expect justice. At a minimum, we hope that we can change the system, stop police officers from racial profiling black Americans. But I mean, the fact that you can't even get justice, which is the minimum expectation, shows you how broken the system is. So no, we don't just stop because one of the police officers were fired, fire all of them and arrest them. She was sleeping in her home and they killed her. That is unforgivable. Now, I wanted to share part of a documentary, a mini documentary from Vice News, because they talked with Breonna Taylor's sister uh, as her birthday approached. And this was just heartbreaking, but I think it's important because she gives us a little bit more insight into the story. And, you know, she tells us about who Breonna Taylor was as a person because this is a hero. She's an EMT during the COVID pandemic. So who knows how many lives she saved. But I mean, this is what Breonna Taylor's sister had to say. I think this was really, um, she, she made a lot of good poignant points here. Her family is still fighting for justice for Taylor and they're still grieving. She literally was the sweetest person ever. The car rides was fun with my sister. They're like the funnest things ever. I have friends when my sister passed away, they were telling me like they admired our relationship. They wish they their and their siblings were like that. So you were very close. Yeah. Tomorrow, Taylor would have turned 27. A lot of people don't realize like my life had to change in a moment. Not in days, in a moment. I had to uproot my norm to make a new norm. Being at family functions and not seeing her come in being goofy, it is so weird. It's so weird that her birthday is Friday and she is not getting on my last nerve talking about, does this match? Does this look right? Am I gonna look cute for my birthday? I got a hair appointment this day. You need to do this for me. It's so weird. She's not here. It's upsetting. Taylor was an EMT, serving on the front lines as COVID-19 began to sweep across the country. She wanted to become a nurse one day. She just wanted to be able to take her time with a person, understand this person, help this person better. Did she talk to you about the plans that she had for the future? She really was looking forward to having a kid. Um, that's really been taken from her and I don't think it's fair. She actually had a kid name picked out if her and Kenny would ever have a daughter, that they had an actual name picked out for this kid. Um, I had just found out recently that he already had a engagement ring picked out. On the night of the raid, Taylor was home with her boyfriend, Kenny Walker. Junia, who lived there too, was out of town. I remember that day. My mom called and she just kept repeating, when are you coming home? And she was like, Brianna, I was like, what? She's like, she's dead. I said, what did she crash into? That was my first word. I honestly, Felt like my sister would have died from a car crash before she would have died from being shot mistakenly. And hearing my mom tell me also when I got home, they didn't know she was EMT. So when they were going to leave out the apartment, they grabbed her jacket, her EMT jacket, and they were like, somebody left their jacket. My mom kept telling him, no, that's my daughter's jacket. And the man kind of like was like, no, it's not. My mom said, yes, it does. Her initials was on the front of that jacket, B. Taylor. She said she will never forget that face, the look on his face. It kind of was like, are you serious? We killed one of our own? Yeah. 
It was really the hardest day. I'm trying my hardest not to cry. I hate crying. It's crazy how people's life don't take a pause because mine's did. The world continues on with, with or without the person. What does justice for Breonna Taylor mean for you? Those three officers being fired. Those three officers being fired would say a lot, mean a lot. Like, do you think that it is enough to punish those officers? I feel like there's a lot of rules that need to be changed. Like, they're supposed to be wearing body cams. As you all found out the other day, they're still not wearing their body cams. It needs to be enforced. So what she wants is for the officers who killed her sister to be fired. That's all she's asking for. She's not even saying arrest the people who killed her sister. She's just saying fire them at a minimum. And this interview was conducted a couple of weeks ago. I'll put the link down below if you want to watch the full thing. Um, but I mean, we still don't have that. It took three months for them to fire one of the three police officers. I mean, this is why people are in the streets. This is why people are protesting. Because we have to worry about getting justice when there was a pretty brazen injustice performed. I mean, if you can't see why this is absolutely unacceptable, then you're just not a reasonable person. You're too far gone. So everyone can see the injustice here. So we shouldn't have to beg for justice. It should just come. We should expect it to come timely. But it's been three months and we get one police officer fired. I mean, this is why people don't have faith in the system. And again, assuming we get justice here in this case, I mean, this life is lost forever. You don't get her back. You don't get her back. The best we can do is try to change the system so that way this doesn't happen to other people. But this life was valuable. Brianna Taylor's life mattered. It was meaningful. Not just because as a human being, she had desire. She wanted to get married and have kids. She was dreaming about the life that she wanted to live. But also because that life, the joy that she brought to others was taken. Her being an EMT, saving lives, that was removed from the world when we needed her. So it's sad. She's never coming back. That life is gone. And it was taken by police officers who are likely going to get away with this. Maybe they'll be fired. Maybe all three of them will be fired by the time you see this video. I don't know. Maybe they will go to jail for a short period of time. But they're lucky because they get to live, right? They get to live their lives when Breonna Taylor does not. So at a minimum, people are asking you to fire and hopefully prosecute the people that killed her. And the fact that we can't even get that shows how fucking broken the system is and why nobody has faith in it. Why nobody trusts the system. Because cops can kill black Americans with impunity. Even if there's a camera on them, in the case of Derek Chauvin with George Floyd. I mean you see in his face he doesn't care that he's being filmed because police officers they don't feel as if they will be held to the same standards as normal americans right they think that they're above the law because effectively they are above the law so i mean if we don't start actually holding people accountable who murder unarmed black americans then it's going to keep happening especially if they're in their homes sleeping I mean, this is such a sad story because Breonna Taylor, like, you can just get a sense of the type of person that she is and, you know, what a what a joyful person, what a happy person she was. And, you know, just there's this deep sense of sadness because she's gone. She's never coming back. She's so young. She's younger than me. And everything that she wanted out of life, she'll never get. And it's just, it's so depressing to think about, right? So all we can hope for is justice at this point and, you know, for closure for Breonna Taylor's family. And I think that part of getting closure is seeing the people who, you know, killed their loved one be brought to justice or at a minimum fired. But I mean, who knows if we'll get that. And the fact that we don't know if there will be justice for her, it just it's so deeply sad and disturbing, quite frankly.